I am. There's my speaker. Okay. Will the secretary call the roll? Sure. Uh, President Hill? Here. Vice President Ackerman? Here. Director Fultz? Here. Director Mayhood? Here. And Director Smalley? Here. All in attendance. Okay. Uh, Jamie, we need to confirm that you have no one else in the room over the age of 18. I am alone in this room. Uh, the door I, is closed, so there is no other individuals with me of any age. Thank you. Okay. Are there any changes to the closed session agenda? Are there any oral communications regarding items in the closed session? This portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public for items which are on the closed session portion of the agenda. Any person may address the board of directors at this time on closed session items. Normally presentations must not exceed three minutes in length and individuals may only speak once during oral communications. No actions may be taken by the board of directors on any oral communications present presented. However, the board of directors may request that the matter be placed on a future agenda. Do we have anybody who- I believe we have one attendee, do we still? We do have one attendee, but their hand is not raised. Okay. Seeing no members of the public who wish to uh, give us oral communications, we will now adjourn to closed session. Be in this meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. We are just coming out of closed session. Uh, we have one thing to report, which is we have agreed that we will offer the interim general manager the opportunity to spend another two months with us negotiating and finalizing his contract. Um, we just were unable to get all the way through it. So uh, we'll, and since your current contract expires before the next board meeting, we're going to uh, give you some more time and give us some more time to finish negotiating it. So, um, where are we here? Okay, um, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, President. I would like to add this proclamation uh, yes. for Ali Hassan. Yes. Okay, so proclamation of appreciation of service for Holly Hossack upon her retirement. Whereas Holly Hossack has been an invaluable member of the district for the past 10 years, serving with dedication, professionalism, and excellence. And whereas Ms. Hossack has na admirably navigated through five different district managers and multiple board members demonstrating remarkable resilience and adaptability throughout the various transitions brought to the district. And whereas Holly has been a dedicated presence at 241 board meetings and numerous committees, totaling in the hundreds, maintaining order, consistency, and adherence to rules and procedures that have significantly contributed to the consistency of the district. And whereas Holly's steady presence proved invaluable as the district endured significant storms in 2017 and 2023, struggled with the CZU wildfire in 2020, and navigated the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas Holly has had the extraordinary privilege of personally meeting Ringo Starr, Huey Lewis, and Hall and & Oates, legendary figures in the music industry, showcasing her exceptional networking abilities and illustrating her capacity to act with grace and distinction on a global stage. And whereas Holly has had the rare experience of acting in movies alongside Burt Reynolds, Neil Young, and others, a further display of her diverse talents, 
Whereas Holly has an incredible ability to bring the sunshine to the district offices and her infectious laughter and genuine kindness has made every workday special and will be deeply missed by her fellow workers. Now, the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District do hereby proclaim its deepest appreciation to Holly Hasek and commend her for 10 years of exemplary service, devotion, and commitment to the mission and values of the district. And the district extends its best wishes to Holly for her future endeavors, confident that she will continue to excel and make significant contributions in all that she engages. May she play long rounds of golf and passionate games of canasta with her family into perpetuity. Be it further resolved that a copy of this pro proclamation will be presented to Holly as a token of our gratitude and that it be prominently displayed within our organization as a tes testimony to her exemplary, blah, exemplary service and lasting impact. So, thank you. That is it. Oh my gosh, that is so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> We need to go out to public comment before we move that and take board comments. Yes. Do we have any uh, comments from the public regarding that matter? Any comments from the board? Yes. I see Holly at a loss for words, um, which is very, very <laughs> unusual, folks, for, <laughs> for those of us that haven't dealt with her for very long. So thank you, Holly. Thank you. So I move this proclamation. Do we have a second? There's a Jim Mo well, Jim Mosher's hand up. Oh, we have a hand up. Those hands up again. Do we have a hand up? From this Jim Mosher, yes. Yes. Mr. Mosher. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I just want to add my accolades for Holly. She's been really great with great pairs <clears throat> um, and with me. Personally, it's been uh, really great working with you, Holly, and I want to thank you for all the service you've given to the district, to the board, and to all of us great pairs. Uh, thank you so much. Do you have any other comments from the public? Not seeing any hands up. <laughs> Do we have any comments from the board? I, other I, comments from I, the board? I, Gail? Yeah. Um, I especially want to thank Holly because when I was elected to the board and then was elected president, um, I sort of jumped in with two feet, uh, sometimes not looking first where I jumped. And there were many times um, when Holly saved me from making serious mistakes. Um, and she also adjusted very gracefully to my somewhat different style of operating as board president. And so I, I really uh, greatly appreciate the fact that um, her guidance and, and sort of educating me as a board president. And you just had an example of one of the things I love about Holly is she used the word, how many times have you heard the word verklempt used <laughs> correctly? In, in a situation. So she writes beautifully, and it was one of the things that I enjoyed uh, with Holly is, is exchanging emails with her, and um, that was just another example of that use of the word for Clint. <laughs> okay, board okay, vote. I, I would I'd like, like to, to I'm just looking. Um, sorry, Jamie. Go, go ahead. Comments further from the board? Jamie? I, I am so sorry that I am not able to be there tonight, Holly, for your last uh, board meeting. You have um, been just a, a, a tremendous support on the board, um, but also, a, you know, a good friend. And I'm looking forward to the next chapter where you're no longer working for the Water District and we can get in our RVs and Airstreams and go meet each other in a campsite. So, uh Really, congratulations and and enjoy your retirement. You've earned it, and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing you on the other side. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing the next music video with Huey Lewis <laughs> and or movie. I'm looking. I have your IMDb up here right here, so I want to see a few more entries in there. Yes. Okay. It's coming. <laughs> Okay, a vote. Uh, uh, yes. 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 Jamie, vote? Very much yes. And yes, unanimous. Thank you, everybody.
Okay. Um, oral communications. This portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public on any subject that lies within the jurisdiction of the district and is not on the agenda. Any person may address the board of directors at this time. Normally, presentations must not exceed three minutes in length and individuals may speak only once. Please understand that the Brown Act limits what the board can do regarding issues not on the agenda. No action or discussion may occur on issues outside of those already listed on today's agenda. Any director may request that a matter raised during oral communications be placed on a future agenda. Do we have any oral communications from the public? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rick Moran. I live in beautiful Ben Lowe. Uh, I tried to make comments on the Valley Gardening housing project at the last environmental engineering meeting, but due to technical issues, I was unable to be clearly heard. I'm here tonight because I want to uh, I want the water district to negotiate the best possible conditions before approval of the Valley Gardens development. During my service on the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency, I learned that sustainability is primary for the reliable supply of quality water for our district and that climate change will cause a dwindling of rain in our watershed. This, along with the destruction of our surface water collection capacity from the CZU fire, has left us with a significant reduction of water. The 2020 Urban Water Management Plan projected that our destroyed pipe would be replaced in two to three years. That hasn't happened. We've replaced Mormon Creek Pipeline to partially meet the supply we had prior to the CZU fire. I'd like to address a claim that this project will reduce water use by offering another interpretation. The Valley Gardens Golf Course irrigation, by their own estimates, use 70 acre feet of water per year. While this development will use 56 acre feet, saving 14 acre feet. However, the golf course irrigation water was drawn directly from their own private well, not supplied by this water district. So adding 214 dwellings with 600 plus residents will use 56 acre feet of water per year or 50,700 gallons of water per day, which actually increases demand from our system while creating no new supply. The golf, the golf course in, San, in Scotts Valley is the most overdrafted section of the Santa Margarita aquifer. So how does this project save water for our district? I suggest that the developers make a meaningful financial investment to expedite the replacing of the remaining destroyed pipeline as an additional condition for board approval. This would demonstrate their commitment to our community and the sustainability of the ownership. <clears throat> when this project is brought before the board, it would be beneficial to have two separate board meetings to address this issue. I suggest a notice of public hearing in the local papers to reach the public adequately. Customers' questions and ideas will lead to a healthy dialogue, creating the best outcome for current and new water users. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any additional comments from the public? Anyone wish to address the board? Do we have anyone online? Can we see? I don't see anybody online. I don't see any hands up. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Unfinished business, we have none listed. New business. Monthly financial report. Do we have our financial report? Oh, sorry. Yes. So um, Heather is gonna go ahead and give you the financial report. Thank you. Good evening, Board of Directors. The, re the report before you tonight is an abbreviated version of the quarterly status report. We heard some concerns from the board as well as from the public that there was insufficient fiscal information being provided. The idea of this report to be a monthly report 
plus the status report that will come out quarterly with additional information. We're hoping that that relieves the concerns. Each month, the report will provide a year to date budget to actual report, a listing of cash balances, capital, capital expenditures to date by funding source, status of the fire surcharge balance, as well as the status of the unspent bond proceeds. That proposed plan is to place this monthly report on the consent calendar, giving the board and the public information. And I'm here to answer any questions regarding the information provided in this report. Does anyone have any questions? Wow. Not about this report specifically, but you mentioned the quarterly report. Will the quarterly report have um, information that's identical to or similar to what we had been receiving on a monthly basis? Yes. So that would include the uh, accounts payable information, the water usage forecast versus all of that. The accounts, so the, the accounts receivable, everything, yes. Right. So basically we're cranking back on the information to quarterly for a complete report. And then this, this report here is more of a summary report that would be provided every month. That's the plan, yes. Thank you. Do we have any other comments on this? We've got one, Bob or Mark. Um, where can I see uh, the status of our reserves? I, I paged through here a couple of times and I couldn't see that called out. Could you point me in that direction, Heather? While I did not provide the reserves as per your reserve policy, what I do have is the expected working capital at the end of the fiscal year. And it shows the change in the working capital. The working capital is your current assets minus current liabilities. And in reality, that is your reserves, your working reserves. And that is in the report. If so, the budgeted, the budgeted. Uh, sorry, I don't even see it here. Actually. Oh, we lost you, lost you. My, my apologies, it was me. Um, Director Smalley, I actually, it looks like there was, I, I showed a change in working capital, but it does not show the ending balance. So that will be something that will need to be added to the monthly report. I agree. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Director Fultz, I had a follow-up question on that. Does that um, does your use of the working capital include both loan proceeds and free cash? Um, I I consider that restricted and unrestricted. And yes, and the lines that you can't see, it is broken out between restricted and unrestricted, where the loan proceeds is considered restricted. Do you have those numbers in front of you now? Could you share them with the community? I do not have those. Okay. As of, well, I have the use, not the balance. The balance of the loan proceeds you have in on page 12 of the report is the unspent bond proceeds which is close to 7.2 7 million. That's your balance of unspent bond proceeds. And then how much cash on top of that do we have that is unrestricted? Your cash. Um, if you go to the cash page of the report, which is page seven, I've actually list, listed the cash. Eight million. Per, um, that's yeah, that's your operating cash, which is the unrestricted portion. Where you've got the restricted portion is eight point three million. Okay, great, thanks. Sure. 
Can I just clarify, is, is there any reason not to just put this uh, in two lines? It says the restricted portion and the unrestricted portion so that it's a little bit more obvious that you don't have to go to three or four pages and then figure out this complex thing. I do have in the first page of the report, it says the cash balance total 16.4 million of which 51% is restricted. But if in the future, I can actually detail those two numbers out for you. Yes, it's easy enough to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Jamie, Jamie thank you do you have anything? No, thank you. Thank you. Moving on, the next item is the Glen Arbor Bridge change order. We ask for the community. I'm sorry, do we ask for the community? Uh, does anyone in the community have anything to say about the financial report? Any comments? No. So, Glen Arbor Bridge change orders. Thank you, President. Garrett's going to present that for you. Thank you. The Glen Arbor Bridge spanning the San Lorenzo River was constructed in 1967. A six inch welded seal water main was constructed inside the bridge. No access to the internal bridge cells or the water main was provided. In 2017, the pipeline began to leak and potable water was visible flowing from a weep hole in the underside of the structure. The district reached out for design professionals and Freitas and Freitas was awarded the design of the Glen Arbor Bridge Pipeline Replacement Projects, January 9th, 2020. Following design, we went out for construction bids and on January 21st, 2022, the notice of award was given to Monterey Peninsula Engineering for construction of the pipeline replacement on Glen Arbor Bridge. In October 2022, the district received seven change order requests from the contractor and coordinated responses with the engineer of record through the construction management consultant. In November of 2023, the construction management firm contacted the district, informing the district that while the construction was complete, the project had not been closed out nor paid in full. Furthermore, construction change orders still needed to be resolved to make final payment to the contractor as part of the project closeout. District staff was able to negotiate with the contractor to remove three change orders totaling $39,613. Based on district responses from October of 2022 and in coordination with the construction management consultant, District staff recommends 12 of the change orders be granted to Monterey Peninsula Engineering, totaling an additional $123,158 for the additional work performed by the contractor. To fund the change orders, we look to use money from the Quell Hollow Emergency Sinkhole Repair Project which is complete with $262,000 in unspent fiscal year 23-24 budget. While the Quell Hollow project will eventually be reimbursed by FEMA, it was funded with reserves. Staff are proposing to use the remaining Quell Hollow project budget to fund the closeout of the Glen Arbor Bridge pipeline project. And with that, I'll take any questions you have. So, I have one, which is, um, I don't think any of the people present were involved in this project at the outset, but it seems to me that there's a fair amount of, you know, reading through that, there were a fair amount of things that weren't well anticipated in the design work. And so, uh, I, to me, this is yet another indication that we need to be really careful up front in these projects and make sure that we are specifying the right fittings and things like that. So agreed. Bob? Yeah, I'm just following up on that because that, that's definitely a good point. Um, we have enough change orders now, I think, from a critical mass point of view. Um, 
I'm curious as to whether or not there will be a analysis of those to come up with perhaps the set of things that we need, we collectively need to maybe change in the process in order to try to reduce some of the change order volume. Um, it's very common in a lot of these circumstances to do a hot wash, or in this case, it's not hot, maybe a warm wash or a cold wash, reviewing projects and see what could be changed or improved as part of that. And I'm just curious whether that might be something that um, staff would be uh, would be doing. Yes, I think we should review the engineering plans and the more time spent in reviewing and preparation of the plans uh, will eliminate change orders. Mm -hmm. Specifically, though, there might be things in the change orders that might guide changes in the process of preparing those uh, plans and the like. We don't have to go into very deep right now. Sure. I just want to make sure that that is something that staff would be looking at doing as part of improving the overall process that we have. We currently have a list of what we consider engineering problems to make sure that we don't have the same issues on future projects. Okay, great. The other thing I wanted to suggest, and this might be a question first, just to make sure I'm clear, the $49,000, almost $50,000, that wasn't directly related to the project itself, right? They, they, they were there, and so it was convenient to use them to figure out uh, where the pipe was relative to that big slide that came down right there at, at Glen Arbor. Correct. Okay. I, from, a, from an optics point of view, it might have been a, uh, to put a second line in the table, which I think, by the way, the tables are great because it gives us a perspective on how things are going. But because it wasn't related directly to the project, a separate line item might have said, hey, we had to do this, not directly related to it. Um, just as a, a thing to think about for the future, because I just wanted to make sure that from the point of view of the percentage increase, I would take out that $50,000. It's not really part of the project. Um, in terms of a evaluation of where we are. And so basically that 38% goes down to more like 20, 21%. A little closer to the 15 that we're trying to get to uh, on, on things. Okay, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. And following up on, on Bob's comment about um, doing a, I think it's doing a more global look at um, not the engineering plans for a specific project, but in general, what we're seeing. And is there a um, an engineering firm that we're using for um, a number of these that we're seeing kind of a consistent, uh, uh, you know, several of these I see beveling the pipe and no, we can't do that. Uh, uh, planning to use uh, traffic loops instead of a camera. <laughs> <clears throat> to me, it's some of the stuff that the en design engineers should have been picking up. So I encourage, you know, what Bob was suggesting, step back from this one and the other projects that we're seeing this long list of change orders to see if there's something. And I think, Gert, you're alluding to it, uh, looking at uh, practices that we're using within the district on how to change some of that. Um, on that uh, 49,000 uh, change order 12, um, should that be coming from a different funding source um, for any reason? Is that a reimbursable cost? I mean, um, FEMA reimbursable. Yeah. yeah. And it seems as though we're, uh, from a project standpoint, because that contractor did it, we're lumping it into that. Um, and is that the right uh, bucket of money to be able to pull that 49000 from? I think that's an accounting question. I, I think it is. I'm not, I'm not necessarily looking to Garrett for an answer. I'm looking to... Um, I could to Brian okay. to, to that. So, or Brian and our accounting staff. But I don't need the answer now. I want you to go think about that from that reimbursability and from the uh, what, accounts perspective. Okay. 
That's the questions that I have on that one. Do we have any other comments on the Glen Arbor Bridge change orders, either from the board or the public? Um, I, not so much a, a comment on this specifically, but on um, the proliferation, I guess, of change orders. Um, I mean, part of me suspects that this is uh, going to be a condition that we are are going to continue to see as a water district because one, there's a lot of stuff out there that we just don't have that much information about in the ground, right? And so as we're making assumptions when we're doing planning for these projects, you know, those assumptions can be based on some pretty faulty information. And so I appreciate that we're doing some consideration of, um, you know, how how we can understand what the the universe of bad assumptions is. But the other concern that I had, just to be perfectly frank as a board member, was that a lot of knowledge about the water system went out the door with uh, the general manager, Rick Rogers. And so what are we doing to sort of like recreate that knowledge base um, so that, you know, we can reduce the number of potential change orders in the future for projects um, because we just don't have that same level of institutional knowledge. I would like to understand that. Um, and, and following up on that, I mean, I think it's really clear that organizations that rely on folklore or tribal knowledge or what have you, as opposed to information in GIS systems or uh, similar systems, are organizations that are always going to run into this. And I'm, I'm hopeful that the organization will continue to move more towards systems as opposed to knowledge in somebody's heads. Because as much as that is valuable, it is not institutionalized knowledge that can then be leveraged as people come and go in, in uh, the staffing environment. Um, we're not going to have people probably working for us for 40 to 45 years anymore uh, in, you know, going forward. And so that makes it even more important to make sure we're institutionalizing knowledge and taking it out of tribal or people's heads. Can I just add to that that um, I, I get your point, Jamie, but I think it is to be fair to um, Brian and uh, Garrett is that these are projects that Rick would have approved and been involved in. Mm -hmm. And so, and he had all of that knowledge, but there's just so many things in this ancient system that is conglomerated from many old systems that no individual can know them. Um, and so I, I think I just want to say that it, there's it's nothing that the current people were talking about, uh, you know, failed uh, in that these were things that, that were done by staff that had that ancient tribal knowledge mm -hmm. and still things go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Any further comments on this subject? Yes. Uh, oops, hi, my name is Karen Brown, north of Boulder Creek, and I've seen this dilemma in the past, and I'm wondering, are we developing as bills? So as we go through all these different changes in engineering, you know, let's do it this way, let's do it that way, you are actually changing the drawings in the district to reflect all these different engineering orders and changes. So back 10 years from now, USA calls you and says, where is that pipe? You now have an actual drawing that has been updated with all these changes. So you can tell USA, here's where the pipe is. Because at one of these orders, I noticed the pipe had gone up this way around the house. Now it's going down in front. So if you've got an old drawing and USA calls you and says, where is it? And you go, oh, it's up there. So they dig here and now it's here. Because you haven't, up, you need to update your drawings for all these change orders. That way, as you progress, you'll know where the pipes are. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no further comments on that subject, I'd like to make the motion that the board directs the interim general manager to execute contract change orders one through twelve for payment to. Monterey Peninsula Engineering for the Glen Arbor Bridge Pipeline Project for 
um, $158, increasing the not to exceed amount from 320,500 to 443,658. Second. Call the roll. All right, President Hill. Yes. Vice President Eckerman? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Mayna? Yes. And Director Smalley? Yes. All right, unanimous vote. Motion passes unanimous. Moving on, the next item on the agenda is Brack and Bray on Forest Springs Consolidation Project Scope. And Thank you, President. Yeah. Scott, could you bring up, uh, let's see, page Page that threw the document off. Should be page 150. Uh, it's, it's 154. It's 154. It's the, the big one that messes everything up. Okay. Okay, while well, Scott's getting that up on the screen, I'll go ahead and start. Um, so as we know, um, we have the two Mitchells that we are working to try to consolidate, Brackenbray and Forest Springs. And we received, the district received $3.2 million of DWR funding um, in order to execute the entire project, um, which, um, well, so the entire project, which includes a main line through district territory and then on up into Forest Springs and Brackenbury, which includes laterals, hydrants along the way, and then all the connections and so forth in the various, um, in the two mutuals. So at the same time, um, we got back a rough estimate, sort of they call it rough order of magnitude of cost to do that whole project was $12.5 million. Um, and so as a district, we were left with the choice of how do we move this project forward with the remaining grant funds and divide it into you know, a group of projects that's at least break it down into something that's in a, a discrete, a, discrete and functioning part of the whole. Um, and so this is where I would really love that. <laughs> Looks like you're there almost. I mean, I'm there-ish. There, that's good. That works for me. So you can see this is, um, this is, yeah. Great, my laser pointer doesn't work on here. I'm if you need to go point to the screen, Brian, yeah, oh, please, please go. Yes. You want me to be Vanna? <laughs> yeah. It'd be more like the weatherman. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Oh, I why they keep taking me out? I don't know. Okay, well, I'm gonna do it. There is, there is. Yeah, okay. So this is, um, Sorry for the fuzziness, but okay, that's, that's better. Back. <laughs> just had a mind of you need some glue there to hold in place. Piece of duct tape. Zoom, I'll let you zoom. Is that the deal? Yeah, he's zoomed, he's zoomed in the way. There we go. The delay. And the major delay. Okay. So, I'm just going to cruise on through here. So, 
we divided the project up into distinct, distinct and sort of discrete subcomponents. Um, and then asked for more detailed pricing on these subcomponents because we couldn't build the entire project. Because out of the 3.2 million, we have maybe two and a half million left. And so there's the trunk line, and then there's the second part of a trunk line, and then you have the two branches, one's going to Forest Springs, one's going to Brackenbridge. What we want to do is construct at least this one first part of the trunk line. And even that is more than what we have from DWR grant funds by itself. And so, but looking at that trunk line, it really makes sense to build it as one complete unit, at least get the ball down the court and as it were that much farther. And so, okay, if you can hold out there, not touch anything not anymore. Not gonna touch. <laughs> so, um, okay, so this is the one we're talking about. There's this yellow part right here. Just the, basically the Brian, you know, it's the first trunk, and then you have a red portion here. Brian, could yes. you come to the other side and point to it because the public can't see gotcha. what you're okay, pointing. So that there's this yellow portion here, the main line. This is going through the district, and then you have red line here, and then you have the branches that are going off into the two. And so the idea was. Let's build this park here first. And the argument is, is that, okay, we have 2.5 million. The cost of this together is 3.9. We add in all the soft costs, like 30% and 30% 30, 30 soft costs on top of the three-ish million that we had quoted um, to complete this. And so basically the district, it's reasonable that some of those costs can be attributed to the district. Um, we need to upgrade our mains as well. And so they serve now a common purpose. They're providing, the mains are required to absorb these mutuals, to consolidate. That is also upgrading our system. We also have appurtenances along the way, meaning we have hydrants and fire hydrants and connections along the way. So arguably, roughly equal a cost, you could say, is on the district. Maybe less, maybe more, but basically there is cost associated with the district. And so before we put these set of plans out to bid, even though we're preparing them as we speak, we want your buy-in that you're willing to, right now, fund this project with its district money as well as the grant money. Ooh. So $1.4 million of, of district money and the 2.5 of um, the grant money. And again, arguably, arguing that it is, there's certainly district costs involved in that first leg or, or components of which benefit the district. And also that our, even through the grant itself is the grant won't fund all of that work by itself. There's certain components like our fire hydrants and our connections that the grant's simply not gonna fund anyway. Doing a smaller section of that doesn't really make sense as well. I mean, just using up the grant money and stopping um, without, that's also sort of acknowledge, not acknowledging that there is some common costs along the way. And so I think, what we're asking for is less than half at this juncture. As we know, there's changes to the job. There could, could bids come in higher or lower, but we're still leaving a little bit of money on the tape. And so what I'm asking is, I think for the here and now is that the district um, is willing to, that allowing us basically Authoring us, authorizing us to go ahead and solicit bids and that they are going to fund the project, the remaining costs of the, but the project that aren't funded by grant money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Okay. Yeah. Questions from the public first? Um, 
Shouldn't we have comments by the board first? Questions from the board. I prefer questions for the board, public comment, and then final comment yeah. from the board. I agree. If we follow okay. that order, that would be questions that's, from the that's board. That's normal. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Mark? Yeah. Yes. Um, you're saying that, um, or you're proposing that the district should fund uh, part of this uh, initial phase, what you've labeled phase one. Yeah. Um, it improves the, the district system. I'm sorry, why is the comment clock running? Uh, it's it, it was inadvertent, apparently. Um, what do we have there now um, that this new line would replace size-wise? Um, it's substandard, so I think there's like a four inch and a two inch or something. Okay. And we would be putting in a 10 inch, 12 inch. 12 inch. Okay. Uh, putting in a 12 inch. Um, if these two mutuals didn't come to us asking for consolidation, we wouldn't have uh, done this grant program. Um, and when would we have been considering upgrading these lines? Um, because I know it's part of the, the master plan. Correct. But I am not aware that these would have been on our radar any time in the next several years. That's probably true. Okay. So without the two mutuals coming to us, we wouldn't have been having the discussion about upgrading this portion of it. Okay. At this time. Yeah. At this time. Okay. Um, you're proposing to, um, the way the, this is worded, uh, using district reserves. Uh, but after our earlier discussion, um, am I understanding that uh, our loans are part of the reserves and that's what you, or is it truly not the loans and our reserve funds, which it would be available funds, whether it's, you know, bonds or reserves, but the money that we have available for capital. Okay. Uh, so could be the true reserves then and not the, the loan portions that we would be tapping for this. Um, because I've heard in the past recently, that we've been drawing down, we've drawn down reserves for the emergency responses and I'm concerned about. So I, I'm not sure the question is. Okay. Uh, can we tap loan aspects that we sure. have for this? Okay. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. if, if we did. Um, if, yeah, can can you explain which loans? I mean, most of our loans are committed yeah, to certain okay. projects. Or they were restricted. Yeah, restricted to those projects. Correct. So can you expand on that? Um, I didn't, we didn't look in entirely at which, okay. which exactly the okay. loan funds, but the ones, certainly one that we can use. And mm -hmm. I, you know, just looking at it, from a high level, it's like, okay, we could cover this with loans or reserves or right. combination thereof. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm concerned with the reserves aspect of that. Uh, but we can continue with the discussion. Um, if we did nothing to upgrade any of these lines, could we proceed with consolidating these yeah. two? Absolutely not. No. And this is the logical place to start. Um, if we install this phase one and installed nothing else, we, we got no more grants, we, we had no other outside money, does that allow us to proceed with consolidation? Uh, not in itself, but it gets us closer and makes it more viable. And here's why. Okay. The other part of this that I failed to mention is we're obligated to um, we're obligated 
to spend this grant money and get a project done and deliver something. Mm -hmm. And not doing that is a bad report card in terms of grants. Mm -hmm. Doing it effectively is a good report card for grants yeah. and showing that we can do it. Mm -hmm. And so we have made efforts to consolidate with these two mutuals. And what I'm saying by what I'm saying is the district by rights, some of this project along the way could certainly be a shared burden for the district. Mm -hmm. It's not taking ratepayers' money and spending it on the mutuals and consolidation. It's just spending right. it on ourselves while we've got grant money in our pocket too, because we're benefiting from the fact that there's this cooperative effort that we're going to benefit too. The other thing is there's more information, which I can add later in my next the general manager's supplemental report. But the idea is that if we don't spend this grant money and lose it, we have nothing. And the mutuals have nothing either. So my whole point is I'm looking at it when it, when this was brought to me, there was absolutely there wasn't a project. We weren't sure what to do because it's 12.5 million, not the 3.5 that everybody thought it was gonna be. <laughs> what are we gonna do? What can we build? And so I said, okay, let's divide it up. I asked Garrett, let's divide it up into you know discrete sections that actually have a function within and of themselves and make sense logistically from operation point of view, et cetera. And so this is what I came up with. And I thought about doing, okay, let's do the red section first and maybe we can fund more of the, the yellow section later, but it doesn't make sense operationally. And then it also gets into other issues about cost share, which unfortunately we're not quite there and then all, everybody's in agreement on how we share those. <laughs> and so I'm trying to Teflon code it and put the gas on this thing because it's very time critical. Yeah. So I'm burning the candle at both ends. I'm asking Garrett, get the plans ready. Let's go out to the bid. You'd ask me in committee though, to at least air this in front of the board that this is the idea, that the board yes. is okay with putting in some district money. Right. And I could argue that it's more than the 1.5, but like, or the 1.4 that we're asking right now, but we're leaving money on the table. We don't know what the bids are gonna come in and we don't know how much, you know, the dust will settle on. I mean, we could always, have some way of settling up as we move along. If there's additional costs for the next phase, et cetera, we can always true up. But the idea is, yes, there's some district costs here and let's, yes, let's move it along. That's pretty much it. Okay. All right. Those are the questions that I have for now then. Okay. Director Falls. Um, before I get into the questions, I wanna make it clear that I am in favor of consolidation if we can make it work so that our existing customers do not pay anything to have that done or the minimus type funds. So I have a few questions about the projects we're talking about here, uh, which is the yellow part. And I understand the logic behind trying to break it into three sections. I, I never believed the 3.5 million, I thought it was a fantasy. And so I'm not surprised that we're coming back here with this bigger number. Um, our district ends at what point on this map? Um, the dashed lines around it, right? The yellow part. The yellow, the, yeah, so once, once zone. the yellow yeah. part's all once, inside the district. Right. So once yeah. we hit that green part, that is now exiting our district. Well, we do have connections along the red part. Um, we are currently connected to Forest Springs and Brackenbrae and Big Basin Water. That connection is actually on Brook, and that is on the other side of Boulder Creek. But, yeah, but, I mean, but generally, in terms of in terms of our construction project, we we would basically take it up to that dividing line between the yellow and green sections on this map. Yes. Okay. If we weren't doing the consolidation, what would that pipe size be? Uh, it'd be an eight inch, I think. Eight inch pipe is the minimum size we'll put in. Okay. What is the cost differential between putting in 
eight inch pipe versus 12 inch pipe on the entire length of the yellow. To me, that's, that's the big question in terms of understanding what the relative costs are between us taking advantage of the grant, which um, Brian, I hear you loud and clear. We do not want to get a bad um, reputation for grant usage. We've been very successful with grants. So I want you to know I take that very seriously, but I have to ask the question, what are we talking about here relative costs if we were doing this without consolidation versus doing it with consolidation? Well, we don't, I mean, I can't say that we have the... I, I'm not, I understand that. I may not have those costs so, now. This is why... Were you asking me a question? This is why... Were you asking me a question, a director? This is why... Director, I think, were you asking me a question? General Manager Frust, I would like to continue with my... my You're asking project. me a question. My conversation right now is, we. I want to know that price plus, is it possible to get that number by going out to a bid process? Yeah. By asking them to bid different prices. Yeah. Absolutely. Two different types of pipe. Possibly, but I don't. Um, I'm not sure you want to do that. And we we did cost it a number of different ways. Um, we looked at you know bringing it how much we could do with the grant money alone versus the whole thing. Um, it's certainly something that we could do in a statement of values. But the idea here is that. Roughly speaking, I look at it as an equal cost. I'm I'm not sure I follow that. It's an equal cost to install twelve equal inch cost, or eight inch. Equal cost, shared cost. Uh, again, I have. So, what cost is it that you think it would be if we were doing this on our own without consolidation, using an eight inch line? What did you it guys cost? Probably seventy five percent of the entire cost, because most of your costs are trenching, mobilization, compaction, mob, demob. Did, did you guys do a estimate of what it would be to do it if we weren't doing the consolidation? No, we didn't do it that way. Okay, you did an estimate of what it would be doing the twelve inch line. Yes. And what number is that? That's the three million. Three million. Yes. So seventy-five percent of that would is your estimate on doing an eight-inch. So I mean that's basically um, three quarters of three million. That's what we would spend on our own if we were upgrading this to an eight-inch line, exclusive of the um, um, consolidation. Sorry, I'm not following at all. You said three million dollars to put in a twelve-inch line. Correct. If we weren't doing this consolidation, we would put in an eight-inch line. And I think I heard you say that it would be seventy-five percent of the three million to do that. Let's just say. Sure. Okay. So that is what our district would be obligated to spend on its own if we didn't take advantage of this grant money. What I'm trying to do here is make sure it's really clearly understood that the current community is not subsidizing the Bracken Bray or Forest Springs groups in order to get this pipe in. The only thing we're doing is we're accelerating the construction of this from years from now to now in order to take advantage of the grant and get the leverage out of that that in fact in some ways our community is benefiting from because we'll get a better pipe earlier at a lower overall cost than if we had to do it on our own. So I'm still not, I'm sorry, but I'm not following let me, three quarters of let, the cost. Let me do, let me try to do some numbers. <laughs> I, I guess I, I kind of want to just go back to the main point here and is if you look at it as a roughly equal cost and an equal share. Eventually, yes. Um, the district right now we're being asked, we're asking to commit funds that are less than half. Let, let's go through the numbers again. $3 million for the 12 inch line. Your estimate is the eight inch line would be 75% of that or 2.25 million if we were funding it on our own and weren't doing a consolidation with Bracken Bray and Forest Springs. The $3 million um, 
I mean, we, we have 2.5 million left, right? Correct. Okay, so that means we have to invest on current estimates, which by the way, our, our track record on estimates versus actuals has been a little bit different, but let's say for right now, the 3 million is it. That means we spend 500K to put that line in rather than 2.25 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, okay, right. I, I follow your math. Yeah, I'm okay. following Bob's logic with this. Yeah. yeah. So from the point of view of actual no subsidies, in fact, the grant is actually providing our community, the existing SLVWD community, with a huge benefit here to put this pipe in to advance the schedule, whatever number of years it would normally be, in order to get this pipe in and put it in at a slightly larger size than we would normally do on the possibility that at some point we'll be able to get additional funding to bring in those mutuals in a way that makes sense. Yes. Does that make sense? Okay. The other question I had was whether or not this installation in any way deals with any of the pump station no. issues that we had uh, talked about uh, maybe a year ago or so. Yeah, actually, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. I'll be clear, it's $3.9 million. Oh, so $3.9 Soft costs yeah. considered. Okay. Yeah. And you think it would still be 75%? Yeah, you know, possibly. That's just a rough estimate, but it's it's certainly not a one for one. So that bumps it up to two point nine two five. If if again, the only difference really is the pipe sizing and maybe some other ancillary issues around that. Okay. In terms of the funding for this, the the loans that we've taken out um, have been very prescriptive, and this is something that I really wanted to see because we did not do this in the past, we've been prescriptive about what projects we apply that money to. So the community knows with great transparency what the priorities are for that money and where that money is going to go. So in order to use loan funding, we would basically have to go back and take a look at all the projects that we had already committed to do and say, nope. To, you, to the folks that were going to get the benefit of those projects, you're not going to get that anymore. We're going to take the money. I'm a little reluctant to do that because that's a commitment that we made to the community when we took those loans out. It isn't just, hey, give us the money and we'll go do it however you want. It's give us the money. We're responsible in our spending of it. And these are the projects that are on our priority list to do. So if we take it out of cash, Basically, we're then drawing down that $8 million that uh, you're talking about to the tune of $1.4 million. So that drops us to 6.6 .6 without anything else that's going to be impacting um, our cash. Mm -hmm. We get about $3 million because of our operating expense increases going way above inflation. We're currently getting $3 million a year in operating margin. Um, from our revenues. That may change with the um, with the new rate increases, but if our operating costs go up commensurately, it may not. So we're effectively saying we're going to take six months. If we, if we fund it out of cash, we're going to take six months of our annual operating margin and apply to that. Or we're going to go out and get another loan. I am concerned about the level of our cash reserves. I've been for a while, I've spoken about this before, I think Mark, you mentioned it too, that our free cash reserves at 4 million, which is what they were when the CZU fire hit, we almost, we almost drew down that entire amount in order to do that. 6 million is a bare minimum from my point of view. And I don't, I don't know, in, I don't have in front of me what that cash number is going to look like if we commit to spend this money tonight, given where we're going. And one of the things that this district has done historically is we only budget a year in advance or maybe a little bit in advance and we don't give the board or the community a clear picture on what the numbers are going to look like six months down the road, 12 months down the road, two years down the road. I'm generally in favor of this project but I'm not prepared to commit tonight to spending 3.4 million 
uh, or whatever that number may turn out to be as part of this bidding process. If what you're asking for is approval just to get the bids, that's another thing. We are asking for a commitment. If there was a question there, we are asking the commitment and we do need to move this along. So if we what is the deadline? To... What is the deadline on the uh, grant? Uh, deadlines coming up to December 2024 and we're hopeful for an extension to June of 2025. Okay, so we're in another one of these. The board is being asked basically, do it now or else. And I, I really object to being put into that kind of position when we also have other considerations here around, reser around reserves and the rest of our operations that go beyond just this project. But I understand December 2024, I mean, that's not very far along at all. I mean, by the time we get the bids and the contractor mobilizes and all the rest of it, we'll be lucky to make that. Mm -hmm. So I would reframe that and say that um, these two communities, on the one hand, they we have an LOI with them, but are an intent to go forward with this. Um, they're both, if you read the letter of intent, it is. They both were both hammered with the CCU fire. Um, reprioritizing district funds to reprioritize within the district after the wake of the CCU fire is certainly um, reasonable. It's, the ask is reasonable, certainly when we bring the bid to award. Um, we can true up on the funds, what funds exactly, how we're going to draw the funds. Um, but the thing that I want to avoid is going out to bid for this full package and then have you turn around and not want to award it because you don't want to fund it. That's why I'm asking that you are willing to fund it at this time. Can I speak? Yes, uh, please. I, I guess um, I, following up on what Bob said, and I, I understand um, that we do get some benefit from this. Um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, trying to figure out exactly what it is is maybe not a really good ex exercise right now. But I, I kind of have two main concerns. One is, is that you're basically asking us to make up the difference. And that's the scary part, right? Because the grant part is fixed and we've already spent over $800,000 of which it looks like a third, we may not, those expenses are not approved. Um, so there are expenses um, and then, you know, you, you think it's going to be three point whatever plus soft costs of 3.9 and so we hope that it's a certain amount um, but I think the concern is is that given the history of the difficulty of estimating what things are going to cost is asking the board to make an open-ended commitment uh, in terms of that we will make up whatever the, the difference is um, rather than say going back to the state and saying look you know we're we're operating uh you know, in good faith, and we've been moving on this, but the cost of this has just turned out to be way more than anybody anticipated. So it, it's the open-endedness of it. It's not It's not committing a certain amount in my mind. In other words, if you ask me, you know, should we spend a million dollars on this or whatever, I'd vote yes right now, but it's the open-endedness that makes me nervous. Then, then the second question I guess I would have is that this sounds a little bit like the kind of rail to trail debate that they're having down in Santa Cruz where, um, you know, it doesn't make sense to build part of it when it doesn't actually accomplish your whole goal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we do, if we do this, does that really get us any, I mean, yes, it maybe gets us closer, but uh, there's all there's a whole lot of other ifs in there and a whole lot of other money that has to happen 
um, before that, you know, that we actually accomplish the goal, right, of being able to consolidate. So if we don't do that, what, what we presumably are is we're kind of in the state we are now where we have these emergency lines to the two entities and we do provide water. And, but that could, that could be essentially unchanged to act even after we've put in this first step, right? Am I understanding this right? I think so, but you know, there is, I, you know, we have a million dollars in discretionary spending from Panetta's office as well, where we have an SRF loan that we're, or sorry, grant money that we're applying for. I'm, I'm optimistic about, particularly our grant record um, is quite good. Um, but I know that I go back to the first bit is that we, by executing a grant makes us better and showing that we have a machine that can actually do it. The other bit is that I think we're leaving enough on the table that um, if we had to true up later, maybe we would, maybe we, if it ended up being absorbently more, we could certainly look and say, well, that red section's not gonna, you know, that there's gotta be some true up in the cost. Okay, so what do, you, what do you mean exactly when you talk about true up? No, well, does that mean we that you're gonna go yeah. back to Brackenbury and Forest Springs and say you, you have to Well, maybe those, us, what do you we mean? kind of overpaid our share in the first bit, and maybe we need to be re remunerated. But my hope is, is that all of this gets covered with grant money. And really it's a matter of, you know, yes, there's some district costs. And, you know, the other way to look at it is I'm, I'm sure that there's probably at least $500,000 in that yellow section alone of just district costs that are going to be district costs, whether we just use grant money or not. There's certain things that so, just the grant isn't covering. Okay, like, so you can just give, give examples so I understand. Well, so that's what I mentioned, the fire hydrants, the connection laterals, you know, going off to the, the connections. Service lines. Um, that bit. So there's there's costs that the grant's not going to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that was all I had. Jamie. Jamie, do you have any questions? Um, I I don't right now. I'm having really difficult internet uh, connectivity issues, so I'm really only getting a little bit of the conversation right now. I, it's an issue on my end. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I so we to figure out one follow up, please. The one million dollars from uh, you mentioned the from Panetta um, or from the U.S. taxpayers. Um, are you envisioning applying that to this project? Is this project eligible for that? No, that, that is going to the tanks. That's as a earmark or however you'd like to put it. Yeah, it's uh, basically the same kind of thing we did with our loan money, earmarked for a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great, thanks. I do have another, I have another follow up question also. Please. Um, you said, I believe that. You've had some discussions with DWR about expanding the amount of the grant. And I understand from you is they're saying, no, we don't have any more money. Not this kind of money. Okay. Um, if we complete this section, this phase one, does DWR say, okay, you've completed this uh amount of work for the grant or is dwr then going to say wait 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 you only did one third of what X, yeah you only did a third of this so have you had a discussion with dwr as to what they were expecting with this versus yes. what and so we understand that they they want us to put this out to bid Okay. They want to see real numbers. Okay. That's pretty much the bottom line. And then to chew up and say, yeah, this is our reduced scope of work. Okay. So they want to see the full contractor estimate on 12 million, or they agree that 
we already gave them a contractor estimate and we offered to give them the more precise engineer's estimate of the section of pipe that they're doing. Right. And then what we did is they, they're like, we just want to see bids now. Okay. And at first I was kind of like, I told Carly, it's like, we're not bidding this entire project and giving them a cost estimate. That's not how you run bids. Yeah. It's, it's a totally wrong way to, mm -hmm. it's unfair to the contractor. Right. And the whole thing is, is, there's a lot of ways to size contracts, but the best way is to do the whole thing at once. If you do an ad alternate, you're going to pay 25% more for the ad alternate yeah. port. So that's why I, I'm saying do this minimum trunk of the tree, as I'm calling it, the yellow line. Right. And it's, and I'm still saying it's justified. I'm sure if I, I'm, I'm confident enough when I'm telling you that I think it's equal costs or somewhere near that. I'm confident that if we actually get into the nuts and bolts of it, which I'm not prepared to do here, and it's mm -hmm. as Gail mentioned, it's not the place to do it. Is right. we'll come up with something that's probably along those lines, maybe better, maybe worse. And there's other there's other pieces to this too, but it, you know, to just focus on being able to advance the ball right. some portion down the field is a big deal. And it could take a while, but it's like uh, accomplish the, something or grant the, money accomplish but, something and, but but the point of my question is we complete this one th this yeah. phase one portion the yellow line yeah <laughs> go back to dwr and say okay now here's all of our uh contractor costs after the fact for this give us the 2.5 well it wouldn't work like that how, however you go yeah, back to, to, to so I'll explain is basically you know we'll get the bids we'll go back to the dwr and say this is the scope now right and get a and get a green light and get the green light before yeah. we start the work yeah. okay thank See, you that, that's what i'm that right now it's like all this talk that all of that has to happen yes if we were going to award in july Right. And have six months to build something and hopefully get an extension from the DWR. We're not going to get an extension if we're not running like running with our foot on the pedal the whole way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're up. Hi. Um, I'm Nicole Barrage, uh, Longer Barrage. I'm the water commissioner at Brackenbrae. I have been working with um, SLV since the fire. And on this particular um, engineering plan since of August of 2022, after we had executed our letter of intent in May of 2022. Um, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. I'm gonna kind of throw out what I was gonna put forth to you. Um, in regards to the unit cost between 12 inch and 10 inch, you're talking about 380 versus 350 a linear foot. Um, I don't have the um, eight inch. Um, the 12 foot um, backbone that was being added into the SLB leg um, was to prepare for a future consolidation with Big Basin, as I understood it, as we went through this process since August. Um, when we first started out this discussion with Rick, um, um, as we went through our FEMA process, we're currently a four inch pipe, and uh, FEMA was only going to entertain a six inch based off of California fire code. And we talked about eight, and now our our design within Brack and Bray is at 10 inches. I've asked for the engineering report because as we were looking at the overcost runs, what can we do for value engineering? Do we really at a um, at 24 connections with no growth happening within Brack and Bray ever? There's going to be no growth. Um, it's all green belt. Do we really need a 10 inch? Um, we were told um, by the engineer it was to fight three house fires, but is that what is required when you don't have enough money? So that was one question. And this is where we wanted to have a working meeting with SLB to kind of look through these details. We, um, Brock and Bray, have secured on our own obligated funds through FEMA. Um, right now, the obligated funds are 1.256. Um, on, on the side of that, as indicated in the write-up, uh, we committed to paying 65,000 through our insurance money to pay for um, survey and utilities, for right-of-way survey, and for design. It's not clear to me whether Four Springs is paying for anything, but we did make that commitment um, in writing to um, SLV. We just have not been billed for that money. Um, it was a change order to your design. Um, in regards to that red section, that red line, um, probably about a good two-thirds 
is your infrastructure. It is already in place. So let's be clear about what that leg represents between SLA current customers. Okay, it's not just the yellow, it goes into the red. What we learned on um, this past week from Garrett was that there is a break in that red line. And in fact, the pipe goes around the neighborhood. So it's kind of weird. We didn't actually get to visit the details of that. And I was hoping we would, because my thought is that DWR um, basically grant this money under a premise of taking small water companies into, um, into a larger water company. That's been going on for decades. They want that to happen. Um, it helps with drought and everything else. But the money that's from DWR should be allocated for the missing infrastructure that is required to hook up. And I know my time is running out. The um, thing I would request is a working session to work through these details. Do you all have good questions? And how do we get to a holistic approach about consolidating at least one, one um, mutual water? Um, we have money that we brought to the table. This infrastructure we're going to be handing over to SLV. You're not acquiring through paying us. We are putting forth a hundred, nearly, there's a block grant that's up. It will be almost $60,000 per household. And so we just want an equitable way to get there. And that your infrastructure at two and four inches is undersized. And your tech spec, I believe is 10 inches is what you guys are trying to put your mains in. Not eight, I think that's the minimum that you'd fall back to, but for your main lines. Can, can, you, can you wrap it up? Yeah, okay. I just would like to say as a, um, a partner in the letter um, of intent that being stuck to a three minutes to, to basically air out this stuff um, is really unfair. We've only had two meetings since the retirement of the district manager, each one hour. And this level of detail needs to happen. Our FEMA grant expires August 2024. Cal has been calling me, asking me to explain why we haven't started our permit work. And they need us to give an explanation, or we're going to lose this money. So that's what differentiates us from Forest Springs. We have the potential of losing up to 1.4. I just got a notice that we have the ability to apply for a $140,000 grant to get the other 10% of our payment. Um, okay. There's a lot more here to share. Thank I'm you. Sorry. You understand, uh, this is a level of detail that is probably best done in a working meeting. And uh, that's what when are we going to have that meeting? I don't know. That was what we talked about the last week. Yeah. So we need to have a working meeting with our staff and you to uh, see if we can pull this together or not. Well, well the board, I thought what I thought we had agreed on as a board mm -hmm. is that we are going to have a board meeting, a workshop type meeting to go through the strategy around and the, and what our current situation is around Brackenbury and Forest Springs. We're, we're in some ways we're putting the cart before the horse here a little bit. Can I just make two comments? Yes, go ahead. Um, number one, it was our understanding from the previous um, team, both engineer and district manager, is that the Department of Water Resources wanted SLV to go out to bid to get the actual construction numbers. And I know there's a different philosophy about that because it's such a great number, but I still think there's a holistic process. But that second thing is this narrative around um, the need to consolidate is getting further and further in the mirror regarding our argument for fire recovery. And we also have a future water company, Big Basin, who's under receivership, who has a lot of attention both at federal and state and county level by elected officials and agencies that are putting money towards that. And their only viable solution will be to come to you and ask for consolidation. So this next consolidation, could be a three-step process, Brackenbury, Forest Springs, and then Big Basin. So I think there is the possibility to ask for more money. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any kind of motion related to this? I'd like to make yes. a motion. Yes. Anybody else in the public? Yes, please. I'd like to say it as well. Online, other hand up. Oh, yes, we have someone online. Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Paige, and I'm reading off my phone because I'm a little nervous, but I'm a resident of Brackenbray. I'm also our HOA president, and I want to say I have full confidence in Nicole Barrett and the rest of our water committee who have worked tirelessly while also um, rebuilding our homes after these, the fire. Um, I pay taxes that support SLV Water District, and I request that Brackenbray 
be included in phase one of the mutual water consolidation efforts. I also respect, respectfully request that SLV Water contribute their share to upgrading their existing undersized main line two and four inches to 12 inches or whatever it is. <laughs> um, Bracken rate um, has FEMA grants and we have deadlines that we cannot afford to lose this obligated funding. Once again, our communities work tirelessly throughout the trauma of the fire to get this money and we cannot afford to lose it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do we have any one else here? Someone online. Two people, yeah, online. Two people online. I don't see them, so. Um, Eva. Eva. Hi there. My name is Eva. Um, I'll start my time. Uh, I am the president of Forest Springs Improvement and Maintenance Association Board of Directors. I volunteered with the water system that is aging in Forest Springs for two years now, and I've worked on the board for almost a year. It's a terrifying reality that our community has been facing, but this consolidation is one of our community's lost hopes. Many of our fire victims are stuck in a crossroads where they cannot rebuild and get the necessary passes without the uh, hydrants and infrastructure that this consolidation is promising. In light of the limitations with funding for this consolidation and the time dwindling to use the DWR grants secured before they expire, the newly proposed rescope of phase one isn't what we all originally envisioned together, but we believe we should push forward. The SLV stands to benefit from the improved infrastructure, as Brian has mentioned, and in addition, gaining ratepayers ultimately at the end of this consolidation. Forest Springs agrees that we should use the DWR grants and the district should shoulder the remaining costs of this phase one, as we in good faith hope that SLV will continue forward onward with this consolidation. Thank you. Thank you. Why do I not see? And there's Bo, Bo, Bo Dill. Bo Dill Jensen. Oh, my, my name is Bo Jensen, and uh, I'm a resident, as is my wife and family. We have been in Brackenbury for approximately 100 years, and we've been supportive of the community during that time, and I request that Brackenbury oh. be included in phase one of the mutual water consolidation efforts. I also, uh, as stated previously, respect SLV Water to uh, expect them to re contribute their share to upgrade their existing undersized main lines from two and four inches. And um, the Bracken, again, to stress the Bracken Bray FEMA grant has a deadline, and we cannot afford to lose this obligated funding. Thank you. I have one more question that I forgot before. Can I ask yes, please. it now? And I, 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 want want to I want everyone to get a chance okay. to speak. Get this all, all out. Wait, oh. wait a sec. We have another community member. Yeah. I, I... Uh, go, go ahead. ahead. We'll let him. Okay. I want to ask. Hi, my name is Matt Dunstan. I am a resident of Bracken Bray. I didn't really come prepared to speak, but uh, I do have a lot of uh, ideas, cost saving. Uh, methods, I think, that, that might be able to accomplish our main goal, which was the consolidation. It seems, seems like we've gotten off track a little bit for the main goal at the start of this process. So I think if we could really get some constructive working meetings together, I think uh, uh, 3.2 million is a lot of money. I think we could go a long way. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have, looks like we have one more hand up. Online, Mr. Johnson. You just spoke. You just you spoke. spoke. Just spoke. Okay. Yeah. Gail, you had a comment. Let, oh. Let. Oh. There's another one. Scott Tucker. Mm -hmm. Our historian. <laughs> yes. Mr. Hello. Tucker. Yes, we can hear you. No, you have to on him again. I'm sorry, I'm getting notifications popping up here. Can you hear me okay now? Yes. Okay, yes. My, my name is Scott Tucker. Um, I'm a member of Bracken Bray and the former HOA president before Page. Um, I'm also a Boulder Creek historian. Bracken Bray has maintained its own water system since 1903 and Forest 
uh, Springs has since 1912. The county has looked the other way for many years and has failed to do anything about our crumbling infrastructure, not only in, in this area, but many areas of SLV. <clears throat> um, we have put a lot of time in this and we don't take the decision to shut our water system down lightly. And um, we are putting a full effort into this. And I just want the board to know that um, we're committing, we're committed to making this go as smoothly as possible. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Tucker. Do we have anyone else online? Oh, we have a gentleman. Yes. For sure. So I'm also a member of Brackenbrae. Uh, Could you come over here, please? Please, please go to the podium. So I'm also a member of Brackenbrae. So, so whatever my wife said, and uh, <laughs> yeah. um, also just one of our best working meetings. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I, I really like that. What my wife said. Yeah. Yay. Uh, <laughs> I, first, just let me uh, say that I appreciate the tone of all the comments from, that we got tonight from the folks at Black and Bray. I thought they were all constructive, and um, I, I think that's what we need to all work together. So thank, thank you for that. Uh, the question that I had was one I meant to ask earlier and I just forgot. And that is that um, so far we've been talking about money coming from uh, Department of DWR and from the district. But it, it strikes me that a lot of what we're doing here is actually in response to the fact that there was this catastrophic fire. So is, is there a potential that, that the districts that are part of it in at least some fraction of it, it strikes me, ought to be paid by FEMA, right? Because we're, we are addressing the problems of Bracken Bray and Forest Springs and potentially Big Basin um, by making these pipes bigger so that we can consolidate with them. So why, why are they not, why, why is FEMA not in the funding mix here? Well, I, I would just say that, I mean, there wasn't any, you know, district infrastructure wasn't damaged. There isn't any- No, no, any... I, I understand that. that our, ours wasn't damaged, but theirs was. And the fact, and we are responding to a larger regional problem, right? If, if, they, if they weren't damaged, we wouldn't be doing this or we wouldn't be doing, well, we certainly wouldn't be putting in a 12 inch pipe. Um, we might eventually have gone to, to say an eight inch or a 10 inch, but it wouldn't have been a high priority issue for us. Knock in the door. Uh, <laughs> we have so, to remind Mr. Tucker to mute. Yeah. Uh, so, so in other words, what, what we're doing, we're doing in response to the fire. Otherwise, we might have, this project of upgrading our infrastructure might have been somewhere down the list, right? I think everybody acknowledges that eventually we would have gotten to it, but we might not have put in a 12 inch line and it wouldn't have been high on our list. So the fact that it got bumped up is in, and made more expensive is entirely due to the fire. So why isn't FEMA in this mix? I've never asked the question to FEMA, but I know we have so much that we're juggling to get FEMA funding right now. And we have, you know, it's the bird in hand thing is we have DWR money and some of our own money. And I, I didn't, it didn't occur to me partly because I just think it would, it would complicate and slow things down at this point because um, we've got the DWR money that's got a fuse to it. Well, I, I understand that, Brian, but the thing the thing is, is FEMA money, we know, is it, it doesn't speed anything up, right? We don't get reimbursed from FEMA for three years. So my, my hope is not that FEMA will magically uh, give us money in the next six months so that we can make this happen. But if, if somehow FEMA were to kick in some proportion of this, like the differential between what we would have done 
on our own versus uh, what we're doing because of the fire, even if we only get reimbursed three years down the road, which is what is kind of happening on everything else that's going on with the fire, at least we're recouping that down down the road. And so that, yeah. So I, I'm just trying to figure out a way that that uh, this doesn't end up when I, you know when I heard the term that SLV will shoulder this, I kind of shuddered a little bit because you know our our ratepayers have recently taken a you know a pretty big hit with the increases, and so I I'm sensitive to that, and so I um, I'm I'm leery of of taking on uh, more and I, I want to do it um, and I don't necessarily feel like I have to have be reimbursed for it right away but it'd sure be nice if I thought that three years down the road that FEMA would cough up some of the money for this. I guess the thing is, is that what I've argued all along is shouldering is I'm only saying shouldering and then what's our responsibility. And so I'm saying that we shoulder our own share. If that makes that an easier term to use, but I I don't really. I mean, there's FEMA money involved. Brackenbury has FEMA money. I certainly don't think that putting FEMA money in the mix right now would complicate and slow down the whole process at this point. We, I mean, as it is dealing with FEMA reimbursements and the projects, we have a long pipeline and. And a shortage of even staff to be able to churn through all that stuff. So, this, on the other hand, there is this portion of it that I can say certainly is it's it's upgrades to our system as well. And as shouldering that, I think is that's why I'm arguing that rather than saying that it's FEMA. Bob, I just I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't want to complicate that way. Okay. What I, Bob and then I'll, and then you what I what I think I'm hearing and by the way I think this is indicative of the fact that at some level I think this whole process has been oversold and we're four years after the fire and we're still we're overregulated at the point we can get nothing done but I think what I'm hearing is that the Brackenbury and Forest Springs people are saying you're going to have to spend $3 million anyway, more or less, to upgrade that yellow portion on your own. Do that and take the DWR money and spend it on the red line, basically. I'm assuming that the orange line on here is what Bracken Bray is installing, and the kind of semi-pink line is what Forest Springs would install. Um, it, it, do, I, do I have that right? Okay, and so what we're looking at what we're looking at here is three million, or and and we we basically say there's maybe an uplift that we spend, maybe not a particularly large one, moving it from eight inch to twelve inch. We eat that, we spend that, and we take the DBR, DWR money and spend uh, on the red line, or. We basically spend the DWR money on the yellow line. We don't get any closer to consolidation because without that red line, you can't. I mean, you said yourself, you can't really consolidate. Mm -hmm. Is that? Uh, and I think that's kind of what. The and and the, is. the other part of this is, I mean, it sounds to me like Brackenbury has been sitting on this money now for a year or two. Um, you're losing fifteen percent every year on your value. Yeah. You've got to get that pipe in the ground. Yeah. Like you cannot wait any longer. So let's figure out whether that pipe, I, I mean, 10 inch for the size of the neighborhood seems like overkill to me, yeah. but 20, you know, not being an engineer, I mean, eight inch, six inches probably enough, but go eight. Okay. But 10 inches is way over. An inch and a half in my neighborhood with 26 houses. On yeah. It, so. I mean, this is this, this, okay. But I mean, I get, we're not doing that again. Um, this is why this this conversation is exactly why at the last board meeting, I wanted a complete discussion over what we should have had two years ago. What's the strategy and how we get here? There's been a real lack of transparency about what the conversations are, what the strategy is. I get your guys point about the fact that, hey, you know, that money is really 
for the red line, not for the yellow line, for the DWR money. But I can't see spending $3 million out of our $8 million of free cash. That puts the district in what I think is a, if another disaster comes along this summer, a fire or something like that, that puts us right on the edge of us not having money for the rest of the community. And this is why this entire thing needed to be discussed two years ago. And now we're trying to put a Band-Aid on it because that kind of strategy work and that conversation wasn't done by, by the district staff at the time. Um, I mean, there are, there are no good um, outcomes here at this point. Um. Jeff, oh, yes, I know. Just let, let, I promised her after Bob. Go ahead, I'll go. I hear from the rest of the board uh, concern with the second portion of the motion that we have in front of us, and that's the, the funding portion. Uh, you've split this into, into two items on the motion. I'd like to make the motion that. Uh, the board authorized the general manager, the interim general manager, to solicit construction bids for Bracken Bray and Forest Springs consolidation phase one pipeline project. Second. Okay. okay. So I would, if you don't mind, I, I would like to make one comment here, and that is that I've heard lots of ideas, lots of thoughts about who should do what and everything. The one thing we seem to be dramatically short of here is actual hard numbers, uh, actual bids. What is it really going to cost? So we're short of numbers, period. Yes. So including our own estimates. Yes. So I'm saying that I'm supporting his motion to at least go out and get some bids. So at least we know what we're really talking about here in terms of the cost for this. And what I heard, what I thought I heard from our general manager earlier is that's not fair to the contractor or they're not going to participate if we aren't committing to spend the funds. Well, I think that you're, you know, if you put something out to bid and then you say, oh, you know, sorry, we're not going to fund it. That's problematic. I mean, the other way is to just bid a smaller piece that's just covered by the DWR, but Again, I, I think from my experience is that building that entire yellow section, I don't see us, I see us, we're getting a pretty fair deal. DWR funds part of it, we fund the balance. Um, I mean, it's risky, sure, we could put it out to bid and then, but if you vote it down, it's, it, you know, or don't want to fund it, that's, that is problematic. And then we're zero in July. And I'm, I am trying to be very strategic here. Staff does a lot of head scratching on this and does a lot of homework. And it is our responsibility to take care of those kinds of details and think them through. And all the other ramifications of the deal making and stuff that's going on. But um, yeah, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I think that we are asking, you know, that we're willing to commit the funds for our portion, which I do believe will end up being, you know, if we end up doing these hard calculations, it could would show that it's somewhat equal or not equal that it's worth committing the funds to. Okay. Do you have Jeff, Jeff can I just interject? Oh, I you? promised her to <coughs> two, two commenters ago. Yeah, board. let, let yes. me yeah, it'd be better if you let let the board finish with a motion yes. and then we can go out to the public. Yes. I, I I I understand your concern, Brian, but I, but I think that the the result that might happen here is not so much that we would um, decide not to fund it if it was too much, but it, then there would be a discussion about how to fund it. And I am very, very worried about running down our cash reserves. <clears throat> One of the things that was part of the whole rate study was that one of the things we would likely do is take out a loan to try to 
build reserves. I know Bob hates to call it that, but but for a moment, say, Bob say will Bob will not talk about that. Uh, and that that basically we create a situation where this would be part of something that we would take out a loan for twenty uh, years. That that would help fund this rather than running down. Um, all of our cash reserves, because I <laughs> agree. I yeah. think we have to have this, this valley is disaster prone. We have we have landslides. We have uh, you know debris flows. We have storms. We have earthquakes. So we always need to have cash there. And Bob was right. We, during after the fire, we ran it down to virtually zero, um, and we can't we can't do that. So. Uh, so I think the issue here is not that so much, Brian, that I'm going to say no after it comes back and it's a little bit bigger than I expected. The The issue will be that I'll go, oh, dang, well, maybe there's another way that we need to think about this, that we're not going to fund it out of uh, cash reserves, that we're now going to take the step that we talked about in uh, the time when we did the rate study, which is that we take out a loan. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, so that we uh, amortize these costs over a longer period of time, we don't impose this on the people that happen to be SLV customers right now. Um, so, so that that's when Mark asked to divide the question um, mm -hmm. from a parliamentary standpoint. I, I think that's what what we're trying to do here. It, it's not that we're trying to stop the whole thing. We're just trying to say, we're happy with one part. We want to move that part ahead. And then the other part we can discuss later. Anyway, can I propose an uh, alternative wording to the second part that maybe it's- Well, no, uh, you, we have a motion on the table. Yeah. So, so just, okay. can I be a yeah. parliamentarian she, here? She... We have a motion on the table. Um, yes. We need comments on that motion. Yes. And then there is a vote on that motion. If you want to, or a board member could offer a board amendment. member can offer yes. amendment, um, or a staff yes. member could suggest something. Yes. But we have a motion on the table. Okay. So but if you have an alternative motion on the table, you have to vote on that one first. Since I'm proposing an alternative wording that you may want to consider, one of the board members, if they would, please consider, which is just to scratch the word reserves and say funds to be determined in detail at the time of award. No, I'm, I'm not doing it. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. You wanted to comment, and Bob, you, did you have a comment? Yes. Um, Bob, I should go first. Yeah, Bob, please, go ahead. So in case it wasn't obvious, my reaction, uh, <laughs> loans are not reserves, and I will challenge anybody to a debate on that in any kind of finance uh, venue. Um, the... The issue that I think we have here is not only what this bid is going to come back to, I think it's also to seriously consider what the Brackenbury and Forest Springs people are telling us, which is that money, that whatever it's left, 2.5 million that's left, isn't for the yellow line, it's for the red line. Um, and that it is our obligation to spend our money on our system, not to spend money intended for consolidation purposes on our system. Um, I'm not saying that I agree with it in any way, shape, or form, but I think that is a central core question that as a community, we need to have a debate on, a discussion about, and see if we can come to some kind of conclusion on it, whether it's yes, no, or a compromise. And that is something we haven't done yet. And that is why I asked for the review at the last board meeting. And I thought we all agreed. I was actually expecting to have that review here. There may be a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes, but it's not in any of the description that we have here in front of us. And that's what I get as a board member is what's here in front of us. I don't have, I'm not privy to those conversations that you have unless I go talk to the Brackenbury and Forest Springs people themselves to get that information. Um, so I, I'm one of the reasons I asked about whether or not we could just get the bid early on in my questioning was, can we do that? And um, I'm glad that that sounds like we can. I'm in favor of that. I'm not in favor of saying we commit to the money and we just figure out how that money comes from, because I believe if we do that, 
we're going to be tapping into reserves. And I think this bid is going to come back larger than what's been estimated because that's our track record, typically about 25%. And that is a huge number. And that hits our reserves even more. And um, I, I can't I can't go there on that. Thank you, Bob. Okay, um, I, I want to speak to the motion. I had something else to add. Um, I, first, I want to thank um, Brian. I think he's really tried hard to represent um, both Brock and Brain and Four Springs in this process. Um, I just want to give clarity on the motion in regards to phase one because we're um, Brock and Brain is asking that phase one to be a holistic approach for consolidation of to you know through Brock and Brain so we can give our FEMA dollars dealt with. And the mm -hmm. FEMA dollars were in the plans for the two little extension legs. And we know it needs to shift over. And we want to have that discussion with um, SLB staff about what's the priority of what that infrastructure should look like because they're going to want their SLB is going to um, acquire this infrastructure. And so um, it based off of all the work that's happened since August of 2022, our FEMA money is going to go into this project and go out to bid a new one project. So I question on the motion whether it includes. Um, basically, the yellow, the red, and orange. And I do think you can, I did construction management, you can do big alternates. And um, putting that whole big section out, there might be some questions about the alternates, but overall, that's a bigger package and hopefully we get better dollar value. And if you have contractors in the value already um, out there, they're going to give you a better point. Um, I would say that possibly working with staff um, regarding the FEMA question, our money is FEMA money. And we're going to get hopefully an additional 140,000 through the block grant, which is getting the balance. We had another project that um, FEMA did not award, but potentially if we put this project forth and find out the real cost of the money in the shortfall, um, working with staff, we could introduce that in order to do consolidation, this work would be required and um, beg the governor's office to help us work with FEMA based off of our projects that we had in the pipeline mm -hmm. to offset those costs. I would also say that Department of Water Resources also indicated that they would help fund that gap and they want the whole project to go out. And I totally hear Brian when he says, it doesn't make sense to take 12 million out there. But if you take the first phase out there and say to DWR, Department of Water Resources, your goal is to consolidate water companies. We want to make phase one a full water company, mm -hmm. okay? And then when you look at um, the 12 inch, possibly because Officials are throwing money at the big basin. Maybe the, the difference between the 10 inch specified for the tax back that you guys have for SLB to the 12 inch, that cost differential, maybe the state of California will throw in money right now to help lay the paperwork to get to big basin. So I think that there's a number of different avenues that we can chase down and that there are people both in Brack and Bray, Forest Springs and in big basin who would go and advocate to our legislature, to our elected officials, to our agencies with additional funding. So please, the original question is, does phase one include us in the bid to go out? Thank you. Thank you. So. Okay, I'm now, I'm a little bit confused. So, um, okay, I made the motion. Can Can you explain exactly what your motion <coughs> sure. indicates? Um, and, and, and maybe just help respond. To my my motion is as worded in the memo. And with what the memo references as far as phase one was that yellow line. No, it does not go into the area. Um, and Nicole, I don't doubt that we could get a number of you know, bid alternate if you add this, if you add this. However, in my opinion, the bigger we make this now, this, this month, in terms of a dollar project, the farther we are from getting a contractor on board because the district doesn't have this additional money. We're talking about it at, you know, the possibilities of an additional loan at this point. Um, I'd like to see how close the district's estimates are for this yellow line to what the contractor comes back with in terms of a bid. And is that something that we could find a way between the DWR grant that we have and other funds to be able to fund that. So I understand what uh, Brackenbray and Forest Springs would like at this point. I'm trying to get to something that I think we could uh, work with and get 
a cost that's real being instead of our engineer's estimate, here's what a contractor is going to do this for because we've been um, unpleasantly surprised over the last couple of years with the significant increases in contractor bids over what we were expecting. So with that, um, I'm... Thank, thank you for that so clarification. Let's... Okay, yeah. so yeah. Bob, you have a question. Yeah, um, I definitely want to vote on the motion, but I do want to ask you, Jeff, yes. to get the strategy session scheduled ASAP, even if it means doing a special meeting workshop, yes. because we are at a point here where, I mean, this should have been done a long time ago. I know this isn't your guy's issue, but we are at a point here where we need to have this, this conversation because if we aren't going to go out and ask for a broader bid, then my advice to the Bracken Bay people is go do your own thing mm -hmm. because we're not giving them any other alternative and they're going to lose that money. Yep. Or they're going to lose it one way or the other, either through inflation, uh, cost inflation mm -hmm. on a yearly basis, or they're going to lose it altogether. And I, I, I don't want to see that happen either. I, we've been dancing around this a long time without getting to any kind of resolution. And so I, I think you guys just need to go take care of it. Hopefully the district will give you some guidance, but you can't wait any longer on the district. You have not been well served in the past by the district uh, in terms of getting your, getting your pipe back into the ground and making use of that money that you're not going to lose to inflation. I mean, you've already lost a bunch to inflation. Don't lose any more. Okay, so I'm going to call for the vote on the motion. Can you? Yeah. Maybe you should maybe you should reread re the motion re just sure. because yes. we had re so much discussion to make yes. it clear on the record. I'll reread the motion. Um, the board directs the district manager to solicit construction bid bids for the Bracken Bray and Forest Springs Consolidation Phase 1 Pipeline Project, and I will amend it as described in the motion uh, presented to the board dated May 2nd, 2024. Will we all accept the friendly amendment that he made himself? <laughs> yes. Yes. That's fine. Yes. Hey, President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackerman? May have lost her. Jane, are you there? I think we've lost Director her. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Mayhead? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Well, we have a start. I think I need to just call one point of order is uh, the comments made by Director Fultz need to be clarified that that's not at all any kind of policy yet by the board. Oh, yes, no, this is absolutely, no, it's absolutely, it's my personal opinion. Yes. My personal opinion, because they can't afford to wait around for us any longer to get to, and by the way, again, this is not your guys doing this. I, I get that, but they have money that's at stake. And unless we're going to help them out with something now, they need to get pipe in the ground. They've waited long enough. Um, well, it's kind of, I'm not sure that I would frame reality that way. And so I, we're still working with Brock and Bray very earnestly, and we're working with Forest Springs very earnestly. So I would, Is there just a for, the point of, for the point of this president, if you will, please clarify that any comments made by Director Foles are not those of the board and its staff is still working with Brackenbury and Forest Springs to make this happen the best way. I, I, I really object to that being made in, a, in that way. Everything I say in a board meeting is my personal opinion. Is that clear? Everything is my personal opinion, including my votes. There's no need to make any clarifications. Uh, Absolutely not. In that case, there no, are. Let's move, let's move on. I do have a question. When do, do you lose your money? FEMA money? It's a well, currently, as yes, um, has given me several extensions to explain our on schedule 
and the plan from SLV and how things are going to be phased. So tomorrow I have to execute a letter to them stating that it is still not resolved from our perspective. Um, I am disappointed that we could not include in phase one all that to see where we were at because it would have given us the ability to ask potentially more money from FEMA and from the Department of Water Resources. And um, but that was your decision. Um, and then the last thing I would say is that for us, there's no guarantee without addressing the red line that SLP will ever get to us. And so it puts us back in the position of whether we have lost time to basically get back into the water treatment business. Okay, so. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, Let us, pre President. Yes. Um, we divided the question, and yes. um, I, I guess the the question to you, as President, is whether you want to have the second part of the question as a motion. Well, nobody's moved it. But, Nobody uh, has moved it, and I think at this point, um, I'm going to take Director Fultz's suggestion, his request and schedule a workshop meeting wherein we can work out a bunch of these details and come up with a plan to go forward. So I will work on that this next week and uh, try and get it scheduled. So. I think that's wise. Yes, so I think that's the next best step on this. And I think we need to move on on the meeting here. Um, we have the consent agenda. Does anyone have any, any board members have anything they want to pull from the consent agenda? Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing no requests on the consent agenda, I will move the consent agenda. Is there a second? I'll second that. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Jackson? Okay, Director Fultz? Yes. Director Mayhead? Yes. And Director Smalley? Yes. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now we have update on current district reports, update on current projects. Does the general manager have any update so, on current projects? Thank you. Um, President, so I have a supplemental report. Normally I do these quarterly, um, but I wanted to give an update on Forest Springs, is, excuse me, Big Basin Water. Um, so Supervisor McPherson has asked, is actually holding a town hall meeting in Boulder Creek on May 15th. Um, there will be uh, Nicholas Jaber, who's the, um, representative from the receivership for Big Basin Water. Um, they expect that electeds, people from the regional board, et cetera, will be there. So federal, hopefully federal and state electeds. Um, and he's invited, you know, he's invited all the board members. Um, before that meeting, they wanted to have a meeting with the district um, and the receivership. So President Hill and myself will attend that meeting to hear out what, what possible ideas that the receivership wants to bring to bear. Um, I've been in contact with the receivership and they are now assuring me that they understand the sensitivity about the district putting in any funds of its own towards the console, any kind of consolidation. But at the same time, what they're asking for is they would like to have a roadmap if they can come up with money. And they do have money right now. They have, they got a million dollars almost and a few hundred thousand of that is towards, um, they can spend on a feasibility study of some kind. So I talked to Barbara or council about this and if we put together some kind of agreement, a coordination and cost sharing or funding agreement, um, reimbursement agreement, I guess, coordination or reimbursement agreement, that's something that we could possibly use and bring back to the board and say, okay, here's a way that 
we're not putting in any of our money and district staff time can be reimbursed, but we need to show them the pathway. And that's a, I think it's a fair ask. It's like, hey, if we're doing this stuff, we at least want to know that it could potentially lead to consolidation. They have a little bit of money, which is the first step to finding out how much money they're really going to need for the next step, which will find out how much they need for the next step. Um, so the point is, is to be at the table and also find out what other concerns they may have, but also to be in that meeting and to reiterate that pipeline is the same pipeline as was pointed out earlier. It's the same pipeline that's going all the way up and going to serve Big Basin. So being able to look at the folks in the eye at that meeting and say, look, um, you know, the district and Big Basin, if you want to help, put your money up. That's what we need. It's money. You're the elected. You're the ones with buckets of money, particularly the feds, but also the state. They want to see consolidations happen, but they have to fund it. Anyway, that's my point is basically that we're going to sit at the table and hear what they have to say without making any commitments on behalf of the board. But I will bring back the agreement that we could draft up with the receivership once we have the terms, et cetera. But the one thing that why I was hoping for the earlier bit is that we would fund our portion is so I could point to the red section on the map and say, look, we're committed to doing the yellow one all the way. Fund this part. Fund the rest. Mm -hmm. Put your money up. I didn't want to bring it up in the context of that, but I can bring it up now in the context of this. That was my whole point, is it is a 12-inch line why is it a 12 inch line? Because it also is going to help Big Basin. So, yes, it's the cost difference between eight to feed the mutuals and the 12 that could also feed Big Basin. But if we got a full amount of money for the whole bit, that's the idea. But anyway, here we are. The idea is that Jeff and I will go to this pre meeting and also attend the, um, the town hall mm -hmm. on behalf of the district. So, that's the update. Okay. Committee reports. Do we have any committee reports? Just minutes to go over. Nope. Nope. No questions. Okay. We did receive a letter to the board from Deborah Lowen that was referred to staff for a response. And is there any additional business to come before the board tonight? I'd like to uh, rise on a point of personal privilege. Okay. Um, given that this is my last uh, board meeting, mm -hmm. um, as you know, I've resigned effective uh, tomorrow because I have put my home on the market in Felton and will be moving out of the district. So I will be ineligible to serve on the board. And um, I just want to first thank the staff, starting with Polly. I think I've already told you yes. why I so much enjoyed being with it. But also, Carly, um, you've been a stalwart, and I've especially liked interacting with you with regard to Santa Margarita. I think you've done us a lot of service there. Scott, for always being here for us and making this happen remotely. And Garrett, I've really enjoyed watching you grow into the job. I mean, you had a real trial by fire uh, taking on this position, and it's just fabulous to watch how, you, how you've really just stepped into that role and, and are doing such a great job now, and I really appreciate it. Um, I want to also thank the other members of the board. I, I feel like I've been really lucky to serve on this board. I, I, I sometimes brag, I, I probably shouldn't do it, but I think it's probably one of the most qualified boards that there has been for a while of people uh, that bring with them skills in a variety of uh, areas. Um, and I appreciate the intelligence and the hard work that everybody's brought to it. And I guess I would say, um, I hope, other people will jump in uh, with me resigning and then with the elections in November that we get 
uh, other members of the public that want to put the time and effort that this particular board members all really put in to do their do their homework. So thank you all for being stimulating colleagues and giving me an excuse to learn about something totally different from volcanoes uh, <laughs> since I retired from Stanford. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You will be missed. Yes. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Um, I have 837.